Merry Christmas. Donate to children's charities, anyone. Happy holidays. Excuse sir. Sir, would you like to donate to children's charities? Hey! Hey, excuse me. That money is for charity. Then you should have kept a better eye on it. I saw an opportunity and I took it. Survival of the fittest. You ever heard of it? Hey, altruism. Ever heard of it? No. It's helping others at the cost of helping yourself. And it's every bit as important as survival of the fittest. <laughs> Whatever, dude. No, Neil. I don't think you understand. How do you know my name is Nick? Neil. What's going on? JJ, what are you doing here? When you and your cousin JJ here were arrested for Grand Theft Auto three years ago, they questioned you in two separate rooms. How do you know this? Are you a wizard or something? We know you stole the Mercedes, JJ. We know Neil helped you. If you confess and admit he was your accomplice, I'll let you sit in county for a while and kick you out. If not, by questioning you in two separate rooms, the police created a prisoner's dilemma. See, the police had evidence that you were both trespassing, but they didn't know who stole the car. So they gave you two options. Either stay silent or rat the other person out. Ratting the other person out we'll call a selfish option, or defection. We'll call staying silent the altruistic option, or cooperation. See, if both of you had stayed silent, then each of you would only spend about six months in jail. If both of you had ratted each other out, then each of you would spend a year in jail. But, if one of you defected and gave the other person up, and the other person stayed silent, the defector would go free, and the person who stayed silent would spend two years in jail. Well, what's it going to be? How was I supposed to know he wasn't going to say anything? I didn't want to go to jail, I did what was best for me. Oh, I know. You sacrificed your cousin's freedom for your own. He spent two years in jail and you went free. So what? Like I said, survival of the fittest. I'm not going to apologize. Actually, according to Hamilton, you did make the right decision. Who? William Donald Hamilton, an evolutionary biologist. He created the equation R times B is less than C to determine if something is altruistically beneficial to an individual. R is the relatedness of the beneficiary to the actor. B is the fitness benefit to the recipient. And C is the fitness cost to the actor. In your case, your relatedness to JJ is 25%, or 0.25. Now if we plug that into the equation, we get 0.25 times 1 is less than C, which is 1. However, if you were to save eight different cousins, it'd be a different story, because 0.25 times eight is two. And two is greater than C, which again is one. So, you're saying I'm right? No, Hamilton is right, but only as an individual. You have to remember that you're part of a population. Dude, what are you doing? That's your gang of car thieves. Alleged car thieves. Right. And on the other side of the street are your rivals. Now, as rivals, you engage in the between-group competition. This means that even though selfish behavior would increase the fitness of an individual, altruistic behavior would increase the fitness of the group. I don't understand. Of course you don't. Let me show you using something called the Price Equation. The Price Equation was created by the evolutionary biologist George R. Price to derive some of Hamilton's work on kin selection. In regards to altruism, the equation is WI equals K minus AZI plus BZ. WI is the fitness of the group, ZI is the cost of altruism, Z is the benefit and individual gains from altruism, and A and B represent the actors and recipients of altruism. For K, we'll pick an arbitrary number, 10, because it serves as a relative value. Let's use the equation to determine how your lack of altruism affected your group. You will be A, and JJ will be B. Let's assume you can find a good lawyer so that the time at stake is one year of your life. In that case, A and B will be one. ZI will be zero, because as you were not altruistic, there was no cost to you. Z will be negative one, as your lack of altruism cost JJ one year of his life. In the equation then, K, which is 10, minus one, 
times zero plus one times negative one equals nine. So, that's a number doesn't mean anything. True. Let's look at your rivals. Let's assume that they're completely altruistic. If they were to face the same situation that you and JJ did, they would both remain silent. In that case, they would both spend six months in prison as opposed to one person spending a year in prison and the other going free. In that case, ZI would be negative 0.5 and Z would be 0.5. So, using the price equation, K, or 10, minus 1 times negative 0.5 plus 0.5 equals 11. Therefore, altruism raises the fitness of their group and lowers the fitness of yours. That's not right. I'm supposed to do what's best for me, survival of the fittest. If everyone does that, then only the strongest survive and we should have the strongest group. That's how nature works. That's true, but it might not be that simple. The theory of multi-level selection states that there are many levels of selection at the gene, the cell, the organism, and finally groups of organisms that must work cohesively to ensure reproductive success. I've never heard of that. Sure you have. Think about bees. Bees are social insects and work in hives, but only the queen reproduces. The workers devote their entire lives to her, even giving up their lives in defense of the hive to defend it against predators. They evolved that way because their cooperation or altruistic behavior meant that the group as a whole would survive, even if the individual didn't. This allowed them to become one of the most successful pollinators in the world and essential to many ecosystems. The benefit to the group is larger than the cost to the individual. Is this finally over? Not quite. Still not donating to charity. That's fine. Just don't use natural selection to justify it next time. It's not worth it.